What I think is going to happen after he beats Ben Askren, and make no mistake about it, Ben Askren will not go two rounds. I guarantee you that. But is, is, that, that, is that you're going to guarantee the best? Welcome back to the Ruin Wheels podcast. Last time we had. Welcome ben back, Askren. everyone. Yeah, Lee, what are you saying? There, you are, man. Yeah, good, good episode, good, good, last good. episode. Exactly. We had a good episode, our biggest um, episode so far. Some 500,000 views now. Lovely. And also, I got a nice message very shortly after from none other than himself, the head coach of Jake Paul, former professional cruiserweight with a record of 34 and 4, one draw, 21 knockouts. It's BJ Flores. Welcome to the show, bro. Thanks, brother. Thanks for having me on. Welcome, bro. welcome. Thank you, thank guys. You. Thank you. Thank you. So, how's training going, man? Talk us through it. How's training going right now? Uh, I mean, honestly, like after Jake's last fight, he took about two weeks off. Yeah. He wanted to get, he wanted to get right back in. So, um, I mean, I told him, you know, when you start at 20, 21 years of age, we got a lot of ground to make up, you know? So we don't really have time to take these long extended breaks. And especially mm -hmm. like when I was coming up in my career, after I'd fight, we'd take a week off and we'd get right back to it. You know, there's a lot of work to be done. So right. um, that's, that's the kind of mentality Jake's been on. There, there's been no time off for him really since for the last 18 months since I've been with him. He's had a couple weeks off here and there, and that's it. But uh, he's been grinding, man. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to, to, to next Saturday. He's got a lot to prove. And I don't think a lot of people got to see how uh, the talent level that he's had on his last fight because Ben was so awkward. Or I'm sorry, because uh, Nate was so he, awkward. He rushed. Yeah. He, was, he didn't know how to fight. So it kind of made for that first round. It made it kind of sloppy. But he's Jake's been working extremely, extremely hard. And uh, he's, he's ready just to make a statement next Saturday. Well, we can see it. We can see he's putting in the work. And we can tell that he spends the majority of his time working on the sport of boxing because, because all of his time really but not all of it that's good that's good and and how how did you first come into contact with jake because i understand i've seen you train him before i understand shane was there as well so you, it's, it's not a recent thing but it is recent for you to be in the head position so how did how did that come about yeah so last uh christmas december of uh, 2019 they called me to be to come in to be a sparring partner and I was like, oh, I didn't take it serious at all. I'm like, who, you know, who is this guy? I didn't even know who he was at all. Yeah. But um, yeah. once, once I came in, it was two days before Christmas. I went from, from Vegas to Arizona to go be with my family. And uh, they called me you know, the day before Christmas, two days before. I drive out to Big Bear. I go to Big Bear. We're staying at Shane's place. And, uh, you know, Christmas Eve, we had our first spar. And uh, okay. I was impressed. I was really impressed how tough he was. This was really at, this is after the Deji fight. I mean, obviously, he had a lot of things to work on. He's very green. Um, but, but he had some, he had some good attributes that, you know, I've been in with a lot of guys uh, sparring, you know, Vasily Jurov and Chad Dawson and Obed Sullivan and David. Oh, we know, we know, yeah, you've been in with the, we've been in the elite fighters. So, I, yeah. I couldn't believe the guys, or I couldn't believe some of the, some of the, the strengths he was showing me in the ring when we were sparring. And, uh, you know, I thought he had a lot of toughness and, uh, he was very coachable. He, he listened very well and, uh, we just hit it off. So we sparred maybe two or three times and Shane was actually out of town on vacation a family vacation that he had planned like almost two years earlier. So me and Jake yeah. started doing the mitts and I started helping him to, to turn and punch and keep his chin down, his head off the center, and little things like that that he needed to learn. And uh, we just hit it off really good. What can I say? That's good. No, that is good. That is interesting. I didn't know that you originally was yeah, good as a sparring sparring partner. Partner. We had three spars. <laughs> to then end up being a coach. He's saying, Lee, do you have a question? You, have a, you look like you've got a little... <laughs> oh, so, so how did he get on sparring you? He did good. I mean... You know, I, th I thought it was good. You know, it's, it was sparring. We weren't going like all out. I think he was, yeah, course, was still yeah. kind of green, but I mean, he did good. I mean, I can't, I don't know. Like I just, he did good enough for me to be like, this guy's got some ability, you know? And he was, like I said, he was, he was very, very green. He was green, but he did some things really well that I, I felt like he had really good straight punches. He came forward. He, he was in good shape. I mean, he'd been in big bear for like nine weeks. So those kind of things I was impressed with. And I, I saw what I felt what he did good, and I started working on things that would allow him to make those attributes even better. His taunting, his feigning, changing levels, going up and down in the pros, you have to go to the body. You can't just be a head puncher. Of That's course, something yeah. he didn't do at all. Um, he didn't move his head at all. But those are things that we worked on a lot in the last 18 months to make him a lot more professional. How to fight on the inside. He had no clue in the beginning, but he was very tough. But now he, he'll bend down, he'll squat, he'll take an angle, he'll get to the side. Yeah. He knows to keep his hands up, keep his head off the center. Like little things yeah, he's like determined. that. You can see he's, he's determined to get better and to learn the sport. Oh, yeah. Big time. He really is. He works his ass off. And, uh, I mean, just over the last 18 months, he's sparred, you know, over 300 rounds with, you know, pros all over the place. Cali, Miami, Vegas. And uh, 
you know, he's he's uh, he's he's coming along nicely. So, and um, it kind of links into my next question. Have you seen him in deep waters with a sparring partner? Have you ever seen him? Because as as fighters, we we've all had those times. You know, we were in there with. And you, have you seen him pull through the adversity in sparring against a good level of sparring partner for him? At least 10 to 15 times, at least. So it's like when I hear people say, oh, he's never sport, he's never fought anybody real. You're right. He hasn't. And he didn't have an amateur career. So he doesn't have that experience like, like, like we had. He didn't have that. But what I've tried to do in the last 18 months is set up probably 75 different spar sessions, anywhere between like four and eight rounds with different guys all over the place. And that's kind of like replicating his amateur career. I will get guys, I'll set up a spar on Wednesday. Tuesday, we'll work on everything we have to work on for that guy in the gym. We'll watch film, we'll do everything, we'll break it down, and then he'll go on Wednesday and have a spar. And, and I'll grade it, and I'll say, hey, this is how we did, this is what we need to work on. And then that Saturday, we'll have another spar, and we'll grade it again. We'll watch film before, we'll get ready for that guy. So that's kind of what I've been doing with him to kind of help like, speed him along because he didn't have that amateur career. Okay, so see, during all this time, have you been living with him in his house? For about, uh, except for the last, except for the last three months, yeah. But he lives down the street. Okay, yeah. So I'm at his yeah, house every yeah, morning. Yeah. I'm at his house every night. So I see what's mm -hmm. going on in the house. I mean, it's, it's ran yeah. like a professional camp. There's no bullshit. There's no female. There's no alcohol. There's nothing at all. So it just it makes me laugh when people are like, oh, has he, uh, has he been partying? I was like, he hasn't, he hasn't drank since maybe a week after his fight with Nate Robinson. And after that, he gave his yeah. back to training again. So yeah. um, he knows we've got a lot to prove and he knows that there's, there's only one way to do it. You've got to sacrifice. That's true. Um, no, and, I'm, and, and, that's, and that's key. And that's what's separating him from the rest of the competition at the moment is his, his dedication is a level above. And, and and it's very evident. So credit to you with that. And that, and and again, it may, what has have you coached before, Jake? Not at all. No. Never. And I would never have imagined myself being a coach ever. So I mean, kind of like a situation right. like you. Like I'm sure you just want to like focus on your career and start yeah. fighting. And, you know, forget about being a coach. It's just kind of a crazy situation. It happens. It happens. But you do seem very enthusiastic, and you, it does seem like somewhere where you were kind of destined to be. Because you, you're, you're, the dedication that you're putting in, what you're saying you're doing to get him to the next level sounds like coaching was something that was waiting for you. Would you, <laughs> do you, agree, would you agree with that? I mean, just, just to give you a little background on that, my father was, uh, he was in the Army. He was a helicopter uh, training, heli doing helicopter training to be a captain for, uh, for airlines. So when he was in the Army, he was based in Fort Hood, Texas. Fort Hood, Texas had one of the best amateur boxing teams in 82, 83, 84, 85, 86 trained by head coach Kenny Adams, who went on to be the 1988 Olympic head coach for Team USA. Yeah, we know Kenny. Yeah. Yeah, he took a good liking to my father when my father was in the Army. So my dad wasn't actually on the Army boxing team, but he would go to the gym, and Kenny would allow him to train with the guys. Okay. Carl T. West, Lauren Ross, Kennedy McKenney, Brian Cook, Vincent Phillips, all those kind of guys. Like My dad would go to the yeah. gym and train with those guys, and he brought me and my little brother, or my older brother, we were going to the gym since we were five, six, seven years old. So right. we grew up going to the boxing gym, um, being around that. And then I got my first uh, commentating job with ESPN in 2008. And my job was literally to, yeah. to break down and study the guys who were fighting on the, on the, uh, on the upcoming broadcast and, and talk about their keys to victory. Was he a banger? Was he a boxer? What was he going to do? What did they do in fights previous? So I would watch film and watch film. And then I got the job with NBC 2011 and 2008, 17. And my job was to break down film and talk about keys to victory. So right. it's just kind of one of those things that I like magically fell into. And uh, I, I love doing it. It's, it's, it's second nature for me. So I really enjoy it. Nice. Good, good, good. And I can tell as well, man. So it's, it is good to see. Um, I understand and I know you have Jaylion Love part of the team, uh, Jake Paul's team and your team. How has it been having someone experienced like himself in the camp? It's great. He's just uh, he's a lot of good experience for Jake. Jake and him get along really well. He, he keeps it very real with Jake. He tells Jake, Jake mm -hmm. the truth, just like I do. We're very honest with him, things that are good, things that are bad. And uh, it's, just, it's just another great mind in there. Jay Leone's been in with a lot of guys. He, uh, I feel like he never really reached his potential in the ring. He, he could still box right now, and I, I wish he still would, but, you know, whatever he wants to do. But uh, he's just got such a great mind. He's such a great um, ally to Jake. He, he pushes Jake. He, he's able to bring things out in Jake and sparring and motivation, like motivational things that sometimes I don't even think of. So – I appreciate Jay Leon a lot and I respect him. And I think he's a great addition to the team. 
he brings in a different element that I don't really bring in. And he's just, uh, he's great to have around. He gets along with everybody and he works his ass off. So it's nice to have him around. Good. Well, shout out to Jay Leon, as you know, former stable mate um, of mine. Uh, And it's good to see him using his expertise to help others progress as well. Um, What is your long-term plan with Jake? Because I feel like a lot of people are understanding what he's doing now. Obviously, he's a lot of numbers, a lot of attention, good fights, you know, with Triller, etc. But what, what, as a coach, what do you see long-term for Jake Paul? I think uh, <clears throat> he just likes making entertaining fights. Like, anything that people, like, think that'll beat him or pe- he just likes it. You know what I mean? He, he's really wired a little different. He's kind of he's kind of weird in that aspect where, and I love it because I'm the same way. Like he likes being in, you know, big events where people don't necessarily think he's going to win and people, you know, yeah, write right. him off. He just like, he likes that, that role. And uh, he's really, uh, he's really kind of embraced it. And uh, what I think is going to happen after he beats Ben Askren and make no mistake about it, Ben Askren will not go two rounds. I guarantee you that. Is that that's that is that you're gonna guarantee the man's not gonna make it? Six he's minutes. not gonna go two rounds. If, if what he's doing in the fight is anything like any single clip I've ever seen, he won't make it one round. But you know, if he gets to the second round, I'm not gonna be mad at Jake by any means. But I'm telling you, with what he's got, with how he comes, how he punches, how his defense is, how his head is, how his stance is, he will not make it one round. And uh, I mean, that's I'm not gonna bet on that. But at the same time, and just in my heart of hearts, I, I don't yeah, think he'll yeah. see the second round. But if he well, does, kudos he to him. Do? We know the sport of boxing. We know it's one of the most uh, unexpected things can happen in this game. And, you know, he, he say he makes it past round two and it starts to get later on into the fight. Are you still, are you, are you still comfortable with that as a, as a coach from your side? I would love Jake to get to the third or fourth round. I'd love it because I want more time under the lights for him. I would love it. Mm-hmm. I don't think Ben's the guy to do it, but I, I, I would love it, man. I would love it if Jake was able to go out there and box three, four, five rounds, and then get a knockout in round five, six, seven. I would love that. I just, Ben does not have the tools to keep Jake off him. It's funny because everyone's saying, oh, Ben's going to come at him and tire him out. If Ben comes at him the way he's going to come, the fight's not going to go long. I'm telling you. I just, I don't see any way how Ben's going to be able to stick around with with what I've been seeing. So I would actually like to see Jake go three or four or five rounds. I would like, he can do it all day. We spar eight rounds all the time. I rotate different guys in. He's in shape. I mean, the guy runs five minute miles and he's 200 pounds. I mean, the guy sprints all the time. Our interval training is a big part of our of our program. And he's just, he's so used to operating at 175 to 185 beats. I mean, he can do, do it all day. So um, I would love for him to get into that into that later part of the fight. But like I said, I just don't think Ben will do it. Okay, you said, it's, you said that uh, he makes entertaining fights. So he likes entertainment, right? I find that, I feel that he's choosing his opponents quite strategically, like easy opponents. Not really much with boxing experience or whatnot. Not, there's not a challenge right now. Yeah, I mean, on your... I don't know. If, did you have any pro fights? Who me? No, oh, I've done Muay Thai. Not, Muay Thai. Not so boxing, I would say, boxing, like, yeah. on somebody's first or second pro fight, it's, it's tough to bring in a big name to somebody who people will recognize. And most people, if you look in their first or their second pro fight, they're not really fighting anybody. They're fighting guys. So at least yeah, with yeah. Jake, he wasn't fighting good boxers. You're right. But at least he was fighting guys that had big names that kind of made, like, an event a little bit. Like, give... He didn't even want to fight Gib. It was kind of the whole, you know, the yeah, KSI. Yeah, yeah. Brother, yeah, and, and yeah, KSI, yeah. KSI was like, yo, fight Gib. And Jake was like, you know, I don't want to, you know, fight Gib. And then yeah. he just kind of fell into that fight. And then he mm-hmm. kind of hate Robinson after that fight. said, oh, you, you beat Gib, but you didn't beat a real athlete. And all these NBA guys were getting behind mm-hmm. Nate's talking shit to Jake. And Jake's like, should I fight this guy? And I'm like, bro, I don't know. Like, I said, we go after someone else. And we ended up fighting Nate. And then after that, like, um, he, we, we had some conversations with some different, like, you know, guys in the UFC and guys in the MMA world. And um, Ben just kind of was the one, you know, barking the loudest. And he's really done a good job promoting the fight. He, he's, he's talking. He's been on your podcast. He's been on Logan's mm-hmm. podcast. He's doing a hell of a job. Mm-hmm. So um, for Jake's third pro fight, to fight an eight-round fight, first of all, most guys on their third pro fight don't do that. Um, but I'll can attest to that, uh, eight rounds. I didn't even do that in my career. And uh, mm-hmm. he's an eight-round main event on Schiller. And, uh, you know, after this fight, hopefully we'll get a little um, better of a striker. But Ben's got a big name. I mean, especially for a third fight. So, it's, I think the, the issue is in the boxing world is that the way Jake is trying to push that he's a pro boxer, a pro athlete. I think that's the issue, the main issue here. Where he's claiming to be a pro boxer and whatnot, a great boxer. But the opponents he's facing are not boxers. I understand what you're saying. I totally get that. And with time, you're going to see. No, you're going to see that. And, 
what, what I, all I could say to you is if you could see what I see in the gym with Jay Leon, with John Pascal, with Andrew Tabidi, with, uh, you know, Danny Torrentino, the kid is 19 and 0 from Miami, uh, all these different guys. If you saw what I saw, you'd be like, holy shit. I mean, this guy's so got a huge, so what, huge future. So what, is, so what you're saying, he's sticking on these guys. He's sticking it on these guys. I'm, like not, he's saying he's sticking, these I'm not saying he's sticking it on Andrew Tabidi. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying he's beaten. But I'm saying with... Guys not hold on that level, but guys like a little lower yeah. than that level, he's doing very well with. And it's very competitive it's sport. Good. I mean, and he's taking his lumps too. Look, he's I'm not saying he gets the better of every sport. He doesn't. But yeah. he's competitive, yeah. very competitive in every sport. And his fundamentals are just yeah. getting better and better and better. He's only been boxing two and a half years. I mean, his left jab, his taunts, his feints, his straight punching, his head off the center now, his deep. I mean, it's, it's 25, 30% better than it was for the Nate Robinson fight. And it's probably 20% better then than it was from the Gibb fight. So he's learning at a very, very accelerated rate. And uh, I love what I'm seeing. So, Yeah, he's living sports, isn't it, Fidel? He's living sports. Yeah, he's living, <laughs> he is. He's living sports. He's, he's living, living sports. I know he's he's living sports. He had with Ben. I mean, it wasn't my style how he answers the question. I mean, it's not, you know, it is what... Yeah, yeah. What, what did I'm you older, do? I'm like, uh, uh, but... You're a coach. Obviously, you're... you're listen, I, you're a boxing man. I'll put you as a boxing man first. I'll put you as a coach second. Right, as a boxing man, we'll ask you from two different perspectives. As as a pure boxing man, how did you look at that press conference? I just, you know, look. I mean, I, I don't take too much from it. I like you saw the odds go from like minus two twenty five for Jake to like minus one fifteen. So people are you know buying into the hype that the, the Ben can win. You know, Ben had an edge on the press conference, no question. He was calm, he was relaxed. Jake hasn't had a lot of big press conferences like that. You know, he answered a couple questions that. You know, maybe he, he could have done them a little better, worded them a little better, uh, looking back on it. But it's done. And all I got to say is, um, you know, the press conference, for better or for worse, it has nothing to do with how the fight's going. Oh, of course. We know. We know that. Yeah, we know true. that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, would I have answered some questions a little different? Yeah, maybe. Um, of course. But, uh, you know, Jake's got his own style. But um, I guarantee you on April 17th that it's not going to matter. Okay, and um, let's let's get to the let's get to the juicy part of the interview. Obviously, I have to, I always like to ask the questions that people don't want to ask, right? Uh, and I'm sure you have seen the comments, the consistency of people saying that I should fight Jake. What do you think? I'll give you my opinion on that. I want to hear your opinion first. Um, but what what do you think about the that the people that are angling that? I don't, I don't, I really haven't paid attention. And you've probably seen in my interviews whenever anybody asks about you, I kind of dismiss it. I'm like, look, the doll's doing his thing. He's, 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 you know, four and oh as a cruiserweight now. And he's, he's got some good people behind him and I wish him well. I think he's a good fighter. He had a good amateur career. He's always been respectful in interviews. What doesn't matter whether he was training KSI or not, he's always kept it real. And he's always, you know, talked openly about Jake for better or for worse. So yeah, um, yeah. I wish him well, that's, that's the truth. As far as Jake fighting you in the future, that, that's that's really nothing we've ever talked about to be honest with you so um we talked about jake fighting Nate Diaz. we talked about jake fighting different guys in the ufc or the, or the bellator world yeah, um, yeah different big names but your name hasn't come up and uh you know like i said i, I wish you the best and i'm not saying that could it never happen down the road but mm -hmm. right now i mean we got we got some we got some work to do we got i mean we got to go out and, and beat a couple of these big name guys and, and really make a name and then you keep doing your thing and then maybe yeah, way down yeah. the road or something like that, it could happen. But it's not, it's nothing we talked about. So yeah, what, no, what is it, his career? Right, yeah. So see his career then, because you just mentioned like MMA, uh, MMA fighters. So you're just going on that route not to fight no pure boxers or is it just oh, for I'm entertainment? I'm not saying we won't. Well, I just, it would, it would, it would take a boxer that's got a huge following that could bring some of them to the table. You know what I mean? We yeah, want it. Yeah. We want a dance partner. We want, we don't just want to carry the whole promotion. And, you know, in pretty much anybody Jake's fight, Jake fights, he's, he's going to have to carry the whole thing. Um, we want somebody who can kind of come in and um, have, have a good amount of followers and also like create excitement and people might actually think they'll win. And of course, if a Vidal fight was made in the future, of course, everyone th would think Vidal would win. Of course, he's got way more experience and Jake needs a little more time. He does. And it's, it's not fair to put Jake in a fight like that right now, even though he's doing very good. He's got to go out and do it under the lights and do it under the lights again mm -hmm. and then keep improving his opposition before he, he'll face someone like Vidal. And we, we got some work to do. And that's fine with me. It's no problem. We're not, he's only twenty four. Yeah, yes. I mean, he's that's what I mean. It, it, Jake, he's, he's young and he started recently. Obviously, I'm twenty three, but I started when I was five, six years old. So it's a big difference. And um, I haven't when I when I see the comments, I think literally what you think. I think he, he's doing his thing within his section. I'm trying to do something within my section. 
It doesn't mean because we both have a YouTube channel that we need to face off and have a fight. Do you know what I mean? That's how I that's how I look at it. He's doing what he's doing. I I have plans and I'm on track with my plans and he's clearly on track with his. So, you know, I pulled know, up that's... your last fight. I pulled up your last fight, but all before this uh, podcast. Yeah, your one yeah. with uh, the little stocky guy. Uh, what was his name? Yeah, Muhammad. yeah, yeah. Tough, yeah. tough guy, very tough. And, and you know what? Your hand speed, Vidal, is very good. And you do a lot of things. I can tell you had a lot of fights in the amateurs. And you know what you're doing in there. That, and that was a tough kid for your fourth your fourth. Yeah, yeah he, was there to, he was in there to survive. And you know, it's hard to stop the guys that are in there to survive because they, they're literally thinking about avoiding everything. They're not giving you any opportunities. They're, but They're not but, trying to be offensive. They're trying to be defensive. And, it may, and you get right, a guy right. like that with only four rounds – it is tough, and you it's know hard. why yeah, are you knocking everybody out? Like you know, you got. I think you I can stop him now. Like, I think I've, I think I can stop him now. I feel like I've improved enough to stop him now. But that's what that's that's what learning's about. That's what you're talking about. That's what you get a six rounder or an eight rounder. You get him out of there now. Exactly. I'm, I'm, my next fight will be will be six rounds. So we'll, where's it going to be? Move, move up. Say that again. Where's it going to be? The fight. Hoping for May June. Hoping for May June. Oh, where um, the location of? To get back, it it will be either te uh, Texas or Miami. So save me two tickets, I'm in. That would be nice. That would be nice. I'm coming for sure. I see what you're doing. You're trying to scout me up close from now. I'm going to the fight. I'm a fight fan. I don't really want to go. I'm gonna go. So no, of course not. I'm playing. I'm gonna have my assistant book that shit, and I'm going 100. I'm dead serious. I want to go. Yeah. No, I appreciate that, BJ. And I said you've always kept it 100, and that's why I wanted you on the show because. I'm, I just talk as a man. I'm not talking inside. Side, 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 the same way. We don't care. I, mean, I don't care and you don't care. I, I, I yeah, really don't care at all. It, it is is. Um, another thing, again, is, I mean, you're, you're kind of stuck between two places, similar to me because you're a boxing man, but then you kind of get caught up in this industry of the YouTube stuff by being associated to the guys. Now, Jake has made it very clear. He said that he respects the sport. The sport has changed his life. But in another breath, he does disrespect some of the best in the sport. How does that work? How does how do you feel? Does it make you feel a little bit uncomfortable? I know it's your guy, so you have to back your guy. But do, does it make you feel a little bit like why don't, don't talk on Canelo like that? Don't speak on those people. Um, Jake pretty much stays in his lane, except for when someone says something about him. So I guess Canelo made a couple of statements about Jake, you know. And, and like I said, I mean, for better or for worse, Jake does not give a fuck either. He's gonna say whatever he doesn't care who you are. He doesn't mm -hmm. care. He's not, he's not uh, awestruck by Canelo. He doesn't care. So mm -hmm. we actually watch Canelo's films. Like we look at some things Canelo does and I'll show him, I'll break down Canelo. And look, I'll be like, look, see when he gets him against the ropes, you see how he stands and he'll touch him here and touch him. And then he'll sit. I mean, we watch Canelo. Like, we Everyone, you have to watch Canelo. Of course. He's the pound for pound guy. I don't yes. care what anybody says. He's the pound for pound guy. Yes. But the fight he's got coming up with Billy Joe, it's going to be competitive. People don't realize that. Of course It'll it be a tough fight. But I like Canelo in the fight, but you can't, you, no one's going to have an easy night with Billy Joe. Nobody. Oh, so no, um, I would just say, though, about Jake, you know, talking to Canelo, I mean, Jake stays in his own lane unless people kind of come at him and then he'll bark back. He doesn't, he doesn't care. But of course, you know, hearing people say, oh, he said this about Canelo and, you got to look and see what Canelo said about him first. So as a man, I, I understand that he's he's going to respond and say whatever he responds. Right, but right. Do I necessarily agree with what he said about Canelo's ducking people? Not at all. I mean, I think he fights everybody. <laughs> he's the man. He fought Golovkin twice and nobody wanted yeah. to fight him. I mean, he fights every. He's fought Arslandi Laura. He fought, you know, uh, you know Golovkin twice. Nobody wants yeah, 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 I mean, to yeah. He's fought, he's fought, yeah. He's and fought, Billy Joe Sanders really coming up. Like, people over here don't know about him well, but he is very, very, very high level. He's He's rarely lost any rounds in his career, much less any fights. So he's a he's a very high level kid. And the kid, look at his background. Where did he grow up at? How did he come up fighting? I mean, he come comes from a fighting area, and he comes up with you know fighting his entire life, being around that type of people. It's, you just mm -hmm. it, it gives you a big advantage. And Billy Joe is a very very credible opponent. Of course, and um, yeah, I, well, I'm glad. For, um, thank you for clearing that up. Thank you for giving your opinion on that as well. Um, we have been on the show, as you know. He wasn't very re respectful in your favor, talking about your your career. But I wanna I wanna ask you this question from a different angle, right? We've seen people lose one fight and be mentally ruined. Okay, we've seen people lose a couple fights and be mentally ruined. You seem like you're in one of the most happiest places you've been. How was it mentally dealing with having the opportunity to win a world title? on four occasions not achieving but still keeping 
the energy and the enthusiasm into the sport that you have now? I mean, I would say, um, you know, fighting for world titles in other countries, mm -hmm. people will never understand it unless you're in that situation. Don't, you don't understand how difficult it is. To, and I'm not making excuses. Look, Danny Green, he, he, he got the better of me for 12 rounds, you know, in, in Australia, in his hometown of Perth. But a tough fight. Um, uh, Babu Shumanov. I mean, I outlanded oh, him in nine battle. of the 12 rounds, but I lost it. You know, yeah, like, yeah. what do I say to that? You know, a year later, I, I go up to heavyweight and I come back and I, I get offered a shot to fight Tony Bellew when I'm 37 years old. I still thought I could beat him. And if you go back and you watch the first two rounds, but I'll go watch yeah, the first two rounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Them, yeah. I, I know. I, I, I just want you to have the platform to speak for yourself. I just me. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. I, I never complain about it because people are like, oh, it's excuses. But I was whooping Tony Bellew's ass for two rounds. And I got hit with the shot. No question. Wasn't even on my belt line. It was below my cup. And it got ruled a knockdown. I didn't get any time. To it would have been tough to beat Tony Bellew on any situation, any circumstance. You take a low blow, a left uppercut, exactly to the nuts against Tony Bellew, and then he's swarming you. I mean, it was one of those situations, it felt like it was a nightmare. Like, I didn't get the time to recover. Mm -hmm. Even if I would have got the full five minutes, it still would have been a very, very difficult fight for me, but it couldn't have started any better. You know what I mean? And yeah, then the yeah. fight with Trevor Bryan the next year, like, look, I mean, I was 40 years old. Um, you know, that fight was supposed to happen in April. It was supposed to happen in May. I was in camp January 1, all the way through April, all the way through May. Finally, in June... The date had switched like six or seven times on the fight. It was a Don King production. Like, what the fuck was I thinking? Honestly, I should have known better. <laughs> and uh, you know, you know what a Don King fight is. You know, you know, you know. know. It's going to change eight to ten times. So after yeah. it changed like eight or nine times, I said, "Fuck it, I'm going home. I can't keep doing this." I was sparring Michael Hunter. I was sparring all these different guys two mm -hmm. times a week, and it was a rough, rough camp for five months. And you can't keep that high level of a rough camp for six and seven. You just can't do it. I said, fuck it, I'm going home. I went home, I was home for six weeks. I got a call two weeks later from Don that I didn't answer because I was so pissed. I just hit decline, decline, decline. So Don reaches out to my brother, calls my brother because he knew he'd be able to get to me. And he's like, look, the fight's three weeks away. I know you haven't been training at all, but you just need to go out there and try to knock this motherfucker out and get your you know, 125,000, whatever I'm supposed to get for the fight. So I, I wasn't gonna do it. And that's the only fight I really ever went into where I wasn't properly prepared. Yeah, yeah. But I went in there and I took a shot and I tried to get him out of there and hey, it was his night. Like he, I wasn't in shape and I hit him with some good shots in the beginning, but I wasn't in shape and I wasn't ready. And uh, he, he did what he had to do. So full respect to him. Nice. Well, that's it. This is why we like to bring people on the show because it gives them a chance to speak. You know what I mean? We're not trying to judge anybody. It's a chance for everyone to understand you more. You know, yes, sir. Like, cool. that's what gave Ben a little, gave him some, uh, favors with the odds is that he had the press conference he had a chance to speak he had a chance to see him so, so he, he, he did right good i give him credit he did good he answered questions well and he, mm -hmm, good, mm -hmm. good friend he's got a lot of experience and he answered how a 37 year old veteran should answer questions chill relax not 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 worked up not riled up nothing bothered him and that that's great but that's not gonna help him next saturday night <laughs> yeah, it's close now. It's close. We've been talking about it for a while, but it's really I literally legit, legit it's just said twenty grand to Las Vegas. I'm putting twenty grand on Jake. I'm uh, for sure. Hundred percent. Recently, you're gonna slap twenty grand on Jake. <laughs> for me, twenty grand. Nah, nah, if I can, nah. And if I can cash out, and if I can cash out my stock market account, I'll send another twenty grand. I'll cash yes, some out. We're living nice. We're living nice. You're living nice. Okay. We're just gonna stay over okay. here in our corner, yeah. You do your thing. You do, you do your thing. <laughs> I'm, gonna any amount, I'm gonna bet any amount I could pull out on Jake. I'm telling you. And if I lose, <laughs> hey, I lose. But look, guess if you knew what I knew right now, you would empty your account and just run to the run to the betting window. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not really a betting man. I'm not really a betting man. I can't lie. I don't. I'm not a betting man. But, but if you but, were, but, <laughs> it's the I'm one. Not, you know, they're giving away free money. But now this is. It. I'm telling you right now. Like Jake is on another level right now. He will not. Ben is not going to have enough to stop him. He really won't. But. Like I said, I give Ben a lot of credit for taking the fight. Um, he stepped up. A lot of people wouldn't when when, mm -hmm. signed, when the contracts got sent. Ben stepped up. He's got confidence in himself. God bless him. Mm. No, this is good. This is good. This is, like I said, it's only got a, only a week to go. Only a week to go. It's a, it's a tough one for Ben, isn't it? It's a tough. I wish one it was tomorrow. I wish it was tomorrow. I really do. It is a tough fight for Ben. I've told Ben. I've, I've said I don't think you're gonna win. I've said this. You know, and I'm saying, I say the same thing to you. I don't, I, I believe Jake will get the win. I do believe we'll see after round three. If the, if the fight does change at any point, it will be after that. You're saying that you don't think he'll make it past round two. 
So <laughs> if he gets to round three, though, Badal, perfect. I would love to see him get to the fourth or fifth round. I would love it. But I'm telling you, his face will not hold up and his body will not hold up. If, I, I'll be shocked. I'm telling you, we're shooting 75, 80 punches around for eight rounds, rotating guys in. Ben can't bring that type of pressure and he, he, de he definitely can't bring that type of chin. I don't, I don't give a fuck what he thinks about getting hit with four ounce gloves. It's different in the boxing ring with those grand gloves. It's different when you're getting assaulted to your head and your body and you can't take your guy down. He, he's in a world of hurt. Like people keep saying like, oh, he's got all this experience. He, Jake's been doing it for like almost, you know, 24 months now and 18 months with me. Ben's been doing it for two months. It's not, it's not going to, that's not going to help him on Saturday night. That's the thing. Time's not on his side. Time to learn the sport of boxing is not on his side at all. Yeah, but no, personally, I want, I, I, I want Ben to win to stop this hype train. I want Ben to win that's to stop fine. this hype train. That's but fine. It's going to be hard for him to win unless he tries to do the rough. He's going to have to try and do the rough thing. Mm. But I don't know if that's going to work. If yeah. Obviously, you're, you've trained Jake, so you know how to prevent someone from gaining He can try all he wants. Yeah, he, can, he can make you fight, him any, fight him any way he wants. And I'm sorry mm. for you on this fight. It's not going to be the one to stop the hype train. I'm telling you right now. But, mm. you know, he's got to keep tuning in and keep buying those pay-per-views and then maybe mm -hmm. you'll get it one of these days. So. <laughs> every, every, um, every fighter has weaknesses, right? As we know. And let's not even say weaknesses, areas of improvement. That's what I like to call it, areas of improvement. Now, I know you can't give out things, too many things. I know how the sport works, but what would you say is one of Jake's areas of improvement? Something you'd want to see him do more of. Not that he doesn't do it already, but you want a little bit more of this for you to say, okay, you've hit that next level for me. Um... I mean, without without getting into too many specifics. Yeah, yeah, without getting into specifics. Specific, specific, <laughs> this is a trick question. It's a good question. Like, I like good question. questions. You know? <laughs> it's very, uh, you know, it's a very two-ended, open-ended question here. I mean, honestly, like, here's what I'm going to say. Like, he just, mm -hmm. the thing that he needs, he needs experience. He needs mm -hmm. more, he needs more, he needs more, he needs more fights, he needs more Ben Askren's. He needs, you know, four or five guys like this until people can really see the best in him. Because, you know, I remember when I was coming up, like, you know, the skills I would show in the fight weren't necessarily the things I was working on in the gym. And it took me time to learn how to put Convert, the gym in yeah. it. When those yeah. lights are on and, you know, you got all those people screaming and just learn how to relax. He just needs more of that. Um, that, that that's one thing he needs. Because in the boxing gym, pe the, the people that say he's a yes man or he's got yes, like, look, I've never been around somebody that listens so closely. Like my father, when I when was training me, like he used to yell something out in the corner and I would do it in that second during the fight, during the round. And yeah. Jake's the same way. Like, Jake is able to immediately put into play any combination I say, um, something I see on the outside that maybe he doesn't see. And he's just, he's, he's, he's probably the best student I've ever been around. Like, he's early to film study. Like, when we watch film, we watch film every time of our sparring. The next day, I'm at the house watching the film, talking about what we did good, talking about what we need to work yeah. on, talking about what we need to do for next time. So, this kid it's is intense. It's really intense. It's something that you're really... Yeah, you're like crash coursing him. You're taking him with a crash course. course. That's that's it. Like keep hitting him with with, hey, we got a lot of time to make. You didn't box. You didn't have 100 fights when you, when you were, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old. No, no. We got to make up for lost ground now. And we don't have any time to fuck around. We don't. So after this fight, he's going to have a little time off. No drinking for the entire year. Nothing. Mm -hmm. All the way through until mm -hmm. next year. And that's a little deal me and Jake made. So he's 100% uh, he's dedicated and focused. But he just needs a little more experience. He's keep doing it. Keep getting big fights. Keep being in these kind of moments. It's, it's hard. And it's impossible to replicate until you get in these moments. You can't replicate. Well, before we go on, before we move on to our... Um, wait, Lee, did you have a question or, or no? All right. Before we move on to our final question, which is one of the most important questions for me on the podcast, I'm just going to do a few shout outs. If you are enjoying the video and you want to see more of these videos, head over to the Real Mills channel, like, subscribe, turn your notifications on. If you're loving the Realist channel, make sure you subscribe there, follow everybody on the socials. BJ, put your socials out there whilst we're doing the shout outs. Yeah, uh, BJ Flores Pro. Uh, we're fighting April 17th on Triller. Jake Paul versus Ben Askren in the main event. We, we got an exciting undercard. We got Frank Mir, former UFC heavyweight champion against, uh, you know, two-time world cruiserweight champion Steve Cunningham. What do you think of that fight? What do you think? Yeah, what do you think of that fight? I, I, Frank asked me how to win the fight, and I said, I don't know. Like, I mean, you, you got a guy in front of you who is excellent at range. He, yeah, he can yeah. box on the outside. He's, he's, got, he's incredibly tough. He's been in with the best really in the fun. world. Like, he's just – it's a tough fight. For, I mean, Frank's got to get close to him and just hit anything and not even worry about hitting the head. Shoulders, arms, body, just get close to him, but just pressure him and see if he can break him. That's his only shot. If that's not, an, that's an interesting fight. 
Steve's going to box him silly if not. And then you got, uh, you know, Ivan Redcash, Regis, Regis Probre. Probre is an exceptional talent. Red Cash is kind of on the back end, but still a very tough gatekeeper. And then you got, uh, you know, Joe Fortier in a Raycon. <laughs> What's that fight? I don't even know what to say about that fight. It's just going to be, you know, whatever whatever punch Joe wants to knock him out with, he will. It's, it's, it's going to be embarrassing. But, uh, you know, God bless him. <laughs> and people make sure that you are always commenting and engaging with the videos. We managed to get 500,000 views on the last interview, and I'm sure this will do great numbers too. Moving on to our last question. This is the most important question. Three <laughs> things that make you BJ Flores. Three things that you live by that makes you the man that you are. Drop a gem on us and let us know. Three things. Champions are built in the dark. Hard work will never betray you. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. It's all based around work. I love, I love my job because I feel like you know, everybody can relate with working hard. It doesn't matter how talented you are, how, mm -hmm. how good you are, how everybody can work hard. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. even though Jake does have some very high level talent, athletic ability, our, our, our mindset and our concept is the same. We will outwork anybody. No one will outwork us. It doesn't matter who, who they are. We will outwork anybody. So that's like the one message I would say is like, that, that's the one, one thing about our camp. We don't think we're better than anybody. We don't think we're more privileged. We don't. Jake will outwork you, and I will make sure he outworks you. And that's that's how we're going to win these fights. So when I hear people talk about going to the third, fourth, fifth round, I welcome it. And uh, that's 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 the one thing I got. Well, there you have it, BJ Flores, the head trainer of Jake Paul, ex-professional, elite professional. We have to add that in because nowadays it can be a very techie what professional, what professional means. Means. <laughs> <laughs> So elite professional. Um, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for reaching no, out. No, a few more, few more questions. A few more questions. Oh, a few, few more, more questions. A few more questions. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, no, this, this normal boxing questions. Are you saying um, AJ or Fury? I got Fury, bro. I love AJ. I love AJ. I think he's just the picture yeah. of what a heavyweight should be. I love the kid. He's a massive, massive guy, too, standing next yeah. to him. Mm -hmm. I love him. I just don't think anybody can offset Fury's left hand, his taunting, his feigning, his distance, yeah, his control, yeah. and this mindset he's got now. If he's not partying, if he's not out there, like, that's the Tyson Fury only ever stopped himself, really. And uh, now that he's like more dedicated and more focused to his training, I mean, I, I can never bet against Fury. Yeah, I never can. I yeah. lost against when I bet against him against Vladimir Klitschko. I'll never do it again. I won all the Deontay yeah. Wilder fights, everything else. I'll, I'll never do it again. I'm with Fury. I'm with Fury. For some reason, I'm, I think I think the trilogy is going to happen. It I could. think the trilogy will happen good. for some reason. I believe I think so. so. I think, if there's two, I think, I think there's Fury will take the two, first one definitely. Yeah. I can't pick against I can't pick against Fury with his mindset with the guys he's been in with. Emmanuel Stewart was telling me, you know, five six years ago before before you know before Fury was anything. He's like BJ, this Tyson Fury kid. I'm telling you, he's he's really something. You got to watch. I'm like, really? The guy who uppercut him himself? That that guy? That's the guy you got to I got to watch. And uh, sure enough, I he's mean, right. Emmanuel Stewart was was never really wrong. So uh, I just I, I always watched out for him since then. And I saw some of his fights with the fight he had with Derek Chisora, a couple other fights. I started watching him like. This guy's not bad. And, uh, you know, I've been a fan of his because uh, when he fought Steve Cunningham on NBC, oh, that yeah. was on our oh, network. Yeah. And I, when, when I had him in the fighter meetings, he was the, the fucking most hilarious, the most hilarious interview I've ever done in my life. He was just so funny. And I just really enjoyed chatting with him for 30 minutes before the fight, the day before the fight. And he was just, he was just hilarious. I was a Tyson Fury fan ever since 2000, uh, 2012 when that fight happened. So I, I just love him. That's good. Uh, well, okay, another question. Do you think... Will, De will Dylan White ever become a world champion? Ooh. Ooh. He, he's very tough, but he's got some. You know, he's, I love Dylan White. I think he's a bit, he's thin. He, what's not to like about the guy? He goes out there, he gets knocked out by Pavek, and he immediately goes back and gets the rematch. And then he, I mean, I just, I, even before that, the fights he had with Joseph Parker, um, you know, those guys, that was a very difficult fight, too. I mean, he just shows a lot of grit and determination, and there's not it's much not to like about Dylan White. He's a very like blue collar guy. Goes out there, bangs away, um, goes to the body, doesn't make much of it, and uh, just mm -hmm. love to see the respect he did Pavek and after the fight too. He picks him up, holds him in the corner, visits him in the dressing room. I just, I mean, what's not to like? I just don't know if he can beat Fury or Joshua. I mean, that's that's, yeah. that's not an easy order. That's the so, thing. That's the question. Yeah, that's, that's the, the thing. Question. Yeah. You really know. <laughs> In another in another era, I think maybe he becomes a champion. Right now, I just yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. time, it. run time. It is, yeah, mm -hmm. it is. I mean, the, the heavyweights are constantly evolving, bigger, faster, stronger. It's, it's a very tough time right now. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't. I'm not sure. I can't say.
But with his punch, anything's possible. But uh, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. All right, cool. That's a good one. All right, cool. Yeah, that's, it. that's a good, good. Oh, well, thank good you again for coming on. I know you got a busy much, week coming up. I know how that fight week goes. Yeah, man. Um, so thank you for putting the time aside. No problem. Thank we'll you catch guys. Up with you after the fight, so we can see the difference in your opinion, maybe, or you know, just how you. I told you so. A couple of I told you so's. Yeah, so, he's going to ask you if you earn your money, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to say, are you going to double gonna, up? Gonna, yeah, I'm going to have an extra 40K, so I'm buying you guys a trip to Vegas and we'll, uh, we'll celebrate together. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Listen, appreciate having you on. In a bit, man. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take right. care. Bless. Life is full of open wounds and open patches So at least I made a bed upon the finest mattress Pillows with feathers disclosing in my endeavours My heart bays speaking with passion stretching the letters Niggas moving Belgium so they're sitting on the fence Only do with pounds, we don't stress about the pence Same up in the US, do with dollars, not the cents Young boy or John